MCAT 2017 CRAM, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, Passage 34, Living in a Rational Society. As you view the um, reading of this passage, you'll notice a few highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the foundations of comprehension and reasoning beyond the text questions that follow. All right, so good luck and happy reading. Paragraph one. The rationalizing of society can be conceptualized as the pursuit of efficiency, predictability, calculability, and the control through technology. But rational systems inevitably spawn a series of irrationalities that result in the compromising and perhaps even the undermining of the irrationality. These passages, I tell you. Paragraph two, fast food restaurants, which epitomize the rational model, proffer the fastest means of getting um, from a hungry state to a sated one. Without surprises at low cost in a carnival-like setting, suggesting fun awaits the customer at each visit. The wholesomeness of the food seems an insignificant consideration. Whereas in the past, working people were prepared to spend up to an hour preparing dinner. They now are impatient if a meal is not on the table within 10 minutes. For their part, some fast food restaurants have developed chairs that become uncomfortable after about 20 minutes to ensure that diners do, do not stay long. Paragraph 3. Fast food restaurants have preferentially recruited adolescent help, at least until recently, because this age group adjusts more easily than adults do to surrendering their autonomy to machines, rules, and procedures. Few skills are required on the job so workers are asked to use only a minute portion of their abilities. This policy is irrational from the standpoint of the organization since it could obtain much more from its employees for the money, for the money however neg negligible it pays them. These minimal skill demands are also irrational from the perspective of the employees who are not allowed to think or to respond creatively to the demands of the Paragraph four. These restrictions lead to high levels of resentment. Job dissatisfaction, alienation, absenteeism, and turnover among workers in fast food franchises. In fact, these businesses have the highest turnover rate of any industry in the United States or US the entire workforce of the fast food industry turns over three times in a year. Although the simple, repetitive nature of the work makes it easy to replace those who leave, the organization, the organization would clearly benefit from keeping employees longer. The costs of hiring and training are magnified when the turnover rate is extraordinarily high. Paragraph 5. The application of the rational model to the house building process in the 1950s and 60s led to suburban communities consisting of nearly identical structures. Indeed, it was possible to wander into the residence of someone else. This actually happened to me before in my old apartment complex and not to realize immediately that one was not at home. The more expensive developments were superficially more diversified but their interior layouts assume residents who were indistinguishable, indistinguishable in their requirements. Paragraph six. Furthermore, the planned communities themselves look very similar. Established trees are bulldozed to facilitate construction. In their place, a number of saplings held up by posts and wire are planted. Streets are laid out in symmetrical grid patterns with such uniformity, suburbanities may well enter the wrong 
subdivision or become lost in their own. Paragraph 7. Many of Steven Spielberg's films are set in such suburbs. Spielberg's strategy is to lure the viewer into this highly repetitive world and then have a completely unexpected event occur. For example, the poltergeist takes place in a conventional suburban household in which evil spirits ultimately disrupt the sameness. The spirits first manifest themselves through another key element of the homogenous society, the television set. The great success of Spielberg's films may be traceable to a longing for some unpredictability, even if it is bizarre and menacing in increasingly routinized lives. All right. The author's argument suggests that the primary motive of employers who make humans work with machines is to A, improve the quality of their products, B, reduce the cost of wages and benefits, C, avoid seeming to be behind the times, or D, increase the uniformity of their procedures. I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so this is a foundations of comprehension question that wants you to understand an important idea mentioned in the passage and then be able to figure out what specific words or phrases mean within that context. In paragraph two, the author uses the fast food industry to exemplify an organization using the rational model. Quote, to proffer, proffer meaning propose, the fastest means of getting from a hungry state to a sated one without surprises at low cost, dot, dot, dot. The wholesomeness of the food seems an insignificant consideration. This suggests that the author believes quality of um, product is not an important motivation, okay? So answer choice A is out. Although the author mentions motivation of offering low-cost product, there's no discussion about reducing wages and benefits as part of the model. So answer choice B is out as well. There's also no discussion to stay with the times. Okay, answer choice C is out. So um, by default, it looks like answer choice B, D, I mean, is going to be our correct answer choice. The opening sentence reads, quote, the rationalizing of society can be conceptualized as the pursuit of efficiency, predictability, calculability, and control through technology. This is mentioned in paragraph one. In the sentence, the author mentions both the pursuit of predictability and control through technology. Okay, so this is starting to sound like an increase in some sort of uniformity. In the second paragraph, the author cites the desire to avoid surprises for the consumer. And in the third paragraph, the author cites employer preference to hire employees that are comfortable with, quote, surrendering their autonomy to machines, rules, and procedures. Okay, so this is definitely going to be consistent with the claim that the employer has uniformity of procedures as a goal. All right, okay. Common thread in the discussion of fast food and the discussion of suburban housing is that people today, A, are increasingly resistant to the regimentation of life, B, expect their needs to be met at the lowest possible cost, C, allow themselves to be treated as interchangeable, or D, are unable to discriminate among products that differ in quality. I'll give you a moment to think. All right.
In this Foundations of Comprehension question, um, you're being asked to examine the relationships among paragraphs to identify the central theme and ideas, okay? Although the passage cites job dissatisfaction, resentment, and turnover in the fast food industry, and a quote, a longing for some unpredictability with respect to suburban housing, there is no assertion that individuals are resisting regimentation of life, okay? Actually, the opposite might be true, nor that they are increasingly resistant. Rather, the passage describes a general acquiescence to the rational model. The only sentence about um, consumer preference Let's see. In relation to the fast food industry states that consumers are, quote, impatient if a meal is not on the table within um, 10 minutes. So there's no discussion of consumers expecting their needs to be met at the lowest possible cost either with respect to the fast food or suburban housing industries, okay? Answer choice B is out as well, so two down, let's examine the next two. There's no, um, let's see. The passage describes basically um, adolescent employees. Okay, wait, let's get it together. There's, okay, so as for answer choice D, there's no discussion of whether or not people are able to um, discriminate, you know, good quality versus bad quality. So this is out. And by default, the correct answer is going to be answer choice C. Let's take a look at this. The passage describes adolescent employees in the fast food industry as being more willing to surrender, quote, their autonomy to machines, rules, and procedures in paragraph three, and to work in jobs where they are, quote, not allowed to think or respond creatively to the demands of the work. This is also mentioned in paragraph three. From an employer's standpoint, quote, the simple and repetitive nature of the work makes it easy to replace those who leave. You can find this mentioned in paragraph four. And also in terms of suburban housing, people live in, quote, nearly identical structures. You can find this mentioned in paragraph five. So one could get easily lost in one another's house and long for movies that offer unpredictability in, quote, increasingly routinized lives. That's mentioned in paragraph seven. All these descriptions detail a number of ways in which people um, allow themselves to be interchange treated interchangeably, okay? So that's why the correct answer is answer choice C. Information in the passage suggests that a rationalized travel agency would emphasize a, plan tours to popular attractions with accommodations at large hotels. B, computerized systems to provide low-cost, customized itineraries. C, personnel trained to make reservations, but with little experience as travelers. Or D, procedures that encourage problem-solving initiatives by managers. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. In this reasoning beyond the tax question, um, you're being asked to apply the ideas mentioned in the passage to the new situations uh, presented in both the question stem and answer choices. Okay. 
The passage describes that industries using a rational model attempt to provide a large number of consumers with a standard set of experiences. So it's looking like answer choice A is going to be our correct answer choice. But let's explore more. In the fast food industry, the author mentions both the pursuit of quote, predictability and the desire to avoid surprises, surprises for the consumer. Consumers expect meals within 10 minutes and tolerate chairs that accommodate them comfortably for 20 minutes. In suburban housing, um, consumers buy homes that are basically indistinguishable from one another and live in planned suburban communities that look similar to one another. So extending this to a rational, rationalized travel agency, you would expect a similar degree of planning and standardization for large groups of consumers. Okay, that's why plan tours at popular destinations and accommodations in large hotels, which presumably offer a standard set of floor plans and amenities, characterizes this approach. The use of um, customized itineraries implies the opposite of the rational model because it offers individual variations. So that's why answer choice B is out. There's no discussion of using employee background, including um, prior experiences as part of personnel decisions according to the rational model. So answer choice C is out as well. And finally, the rational model implies minimizing creativity and thinking for employees and does not discuss different practices for senior level um, employees such as managers. Okay. All right. Suppose that the employee responses to working conditions in fast food franchises also apply to entry level assembly line workers. In light of this information, the author's main point in mentioning these responses is, hey, weaken since the fast food industry is not unique in suppressing creativity. B, weaken since the monotony of work is not necessarily related to employee dissatisfaction. C, strengthen since predictability and employee turnover are associated in another context. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so again, in this uh, second reasoning beyond the text question, you have to apply the ideas mentioned in the passage, specifically paragraph four, to the um, new situation presented in the question stem. The passage uses the fast food industry as an example of how employees are often unhappy with jobs that force them to follow strict routines and prevent them from thinking or responding creatively to the demands of their work. This job dissatisfaction in turn leads to high employee turnover. If this pattern is also seen in another context, such as entry level assembly line workers, then um, this would basically strengthen the author's argument. So right away, you can see that the correct answer choice is answer choice C, okay? Um, an additional example to illustrate the author's main point, main point <laughs> the author's main point basically strengthens. It's not, sensical to say that it weakens. So yeah, answer choice A and B are out, okay? The author's main point is about employee dissatisfaction related to being forced to use only a standard set of routines and the reluctant turnover problem for the employer, okay? So yeah, that's it. All right, congratulations.